So I just wanted to tell a couple stories uh, that came out of the production that have to do with casting or, or just behind the scenes that I thought might be interesting to our audience, the old audience, or perhaps new fans. Uh, we had this open call because we'd already seen all the, the actors from the agencies in Vancouver, and we had an open call. So we had about 2,000 young people, teenagers, the right age, turn up out at uh, the uh, parking lot of BC TV, which today I guess is called Global in Vancouver, but at the time it was BC TV. And it was like six in the morning they showed up this mob for an 8 a.m. call, and uh, BC TV had really well publicized it on the air in addition to which everybody knew it was for casting for a Nickelodeon show for national uh, U.S. television. So the draw was there. And I arrived with my AD and we looked at this mob of, of young people. And by the end of the day, we would called them down to about 50 and invited them back to a, a callback. And then uh, over the process of that week, we cast two or three of them into roles one of whom was a 14-year-old boy named Ryan Reynolds, who told us after he got cast, he said, you know, I came that first day because uh, my football game got, uh, got canceled. He said, I came with my theater friends. I wasn't interested in auditioning, but I didn't have anything else to do because of the football game being canceled. And uh, I guess the rest is history, as they might say in his case. Uh, Another story, when we went down to uh, Orlando and we produced uh, episodes in the uh, Universal Studios there, at the end of the round of the cycle of production, we uh, decided to celebrate it with a wrap party for the cast over at Hard Rock Cafe in the, in the, in the Universal, uh, uh, what do they call it there? The, we called it the ride. <laughs> it was the, the park, Universal Park. And so at any rate, we had the cast at the Hard Rock Cafe, and they had already, between seasons two and three, just after two seasons, created such a wide audience uh, from little four. I mean, when our cast members would walk into the lot, into, into Universal, uh, into the park there, uh, the entertainment area, they were absolutely mobbed by people all ages, from ages four to grandparents, who wanted their pictures taken with the various characters from our show, which they found highly amusing at first. And as it became more and more uh, commonplace to them, they found it a little less amusing. And they used to go in uh, incognito. They used to go in disguise with hats and glasses and so when they wanted to go over to the park and just hang out. But we took them to the Hard Rock Cafe for dinner, and they were mobbed. We, we actually had still photographers just to take a few photographs, but they had... Um, I mean, everybody all ages were lining up to come have their photos taken with Matt or Brooke or Ashley or Dylan or whoever it was they wanted their picture. And it literally could be an 80-year-old grandmother or a little four-year-old girl who wanted her, her picture and everyone in between. So there was just this ongoing uh, photo opportunity for the, the, uh, the people, the guests of Hard Rock Cafe while our cast was, we were sitting down dinner and finally the punchline was when the manager of the, the Hard Rock Cafe came up to me and said uh, Mr. Binkley very seriously this was not a put on Mr. Binkley would you like us to call security so that your cast can eat dinner and I, I cracked up and I so I, I told the cast what he'd said and I said so you want security to come in so you could uh, eat dinner or and they said no no this is <laughs> they love the the, all the photos that were being taken, all the different opportunities to interact with all the, their fans. So anyway, that was a, another uh, show. And then uh, I was kind of a, a fanatic about quiet on the set, yeah, which is not uncommon. And I sat with the three monitors and I watched the three cameras. And I sat within about 15 feet of the actors so that I could go out and talk to them and do whatever I needed to do in terms of directing them. And if I heard people whispering, talking on the set, it always worried me and bugged me because uh, I thought it could contaminate the sound we were collecting in a live shot when we were on. So we were shooting, and the actors were performing and giving their lines, and I started hearing this, you know, some talking, talking, talking. 
And I sort of whispered, could we have quiet on the set, please? And I kind of raised my voice, <laughs> kept on. And I'm just looking at the three monitors. So all I'm seeing is the single shot, the two shot, the wide shot, whatever. And finally someone shouted and they said, John, the set is on fire. <laughs> and I, I looked around beyond the three monitors and sure enough, something had set off a fire. <laughs> there was this big flame running up some curtain and a big piece of the set, which I couldn't see on the monitors, was on fire. So everybody loved that. And I was so fixed, to, fixated to the, to the monitors that I didn't realize the set was on fire. And another time I found, um, you know, we started shooting at about 8.30, so the prep was around 8 in the morning, and I was in a few minutes ahead, 8, and I, I saw Laura Harris, uh, who played Ashley, uh, over behind the set, so where the sandbags are holding the set up in the dark, you know, against the cement wall, looking very distraught, looking really like she was having a hard time. And I walked up her and I said, are you okay? She was only she there at the time. There wasn't anybody else around. And she said, yeah, I'm okay. And I, I looked at her and she just looked bad. And I said, is something going on? Is there something? She said, John, I'm trying to prepare for the scene that I have where Ashley has to have this nervous breakdown. And I, I said, oh, that's incredible. I love it. She was pre actually preparing for a scene that was about to be shot about three hours later. So it was scheduled probably around 11 a.m. and it was 8 a.m. And she was back there at age 15 uh, preparing for this scene, which I tell because it's such a such a, a great example of how these young actors were were so serious about their work and so professional even at that age. And of course, she had been doing voiceovers for Disney since she was about age four. So she was a pro, but it just I just wanted to tell that little testimonial because it testifies to her, her professionalism. And of course, she's gone on to have a brilliant career, which is wonderful. And um, last, I guess, is just a, a funny story, which I'll make anonymous. Uh, I'll, I'll tell, protecting the anonymity of the, of the, of the actor. But one of our cast members uh, in Ottawa, when we moved the show to Ottawa to shoot the second season there, the, uh, the cast members were housed in a, uh, a high rise. And one of the boys uh, one day hung off a 17th floor uh, balcony uh, on a $10 bet. So some of the other guys in the cast had put together, pooled a $10 bet, and this guy <laughs> ends up hanging off the balcony, which is, uh, well, to put it mildly, not only put himself at risk, but put the whole production at risk because he was uh, a principal role. So I won't, I won't give away his, uh, uh, who it is, but uh, he did have some interesting conversations with some of the, the other people on the production staff the next day before he had the <laughs> the pleasure of talking to me about this little experience. So anyway, mm -hmm. so I offer you a chance if you want to throw a question at me. So um, 15 away in broadcast history, he made uh, history in many ways. Um, in terms of rating, in terms of being the first of its kind. So from uh, from broadcast history point of view, what's so unique about well, I think one of the things that uh, was so interesting to us, I, one of my favorite quotes is from William Goldman, a great screenwriter in L.A., and he said, you know, when in L.A., keep in mind that, that no one knows anything. 